Hello, my name is Dr. Tina Ray, and this is the second in my sessions of teens and tweens presentations designed to support children and young people to maintain their well-being and overall mental health. Um, the first session was an introduction. This session is specifically focusing on stress causes and some of the tools that we can use to help ourselves manage our stresses on a daily basis. I think the important thing to say at the very beginning of this presentation is that stress is a normal and necessary part of our daily lives. Every single one of us will experience little bits of stress and anxiety on a daily basis. That is quite normal. And each of us has what we would call this optimum level of stress that allows us to function in an efficient and healthy way. We can cope with a certain amount and still carry on and do the stuff that we would need to do, like our learning, our homework, engaging with other people on a daily basis. The problem when we don't get enough stress in our lives OK, and we, there is a problem here for, for some of us is that we can become bored. We can lack energy um, if we've got too much stress. And that's a problem because we can become really troubled, really upset. And this can lead to really quite significant mental health difficulties. It can be a real risk to our health. So what I call a healthy level of stress, it's necessary and good for us actually. So we mustn't be frightened of it because what this does is it helps us to develop our strengths and our challenges. So sometimes we can be stressed when we're engaging in a sporting activity. It can be enjoyable as well, but at the same time, we can have that level of kind of stress that we're experiencing that helps us to really focus and do the best that we can. Okay, but the problem is when that stress becomes too much, we stop being able to do it well or properly. What we need to know again, that like mental health, it's very much down to the individual person. Stress can mean different things to different people. And what might stress me out might not stress you out and vice versa. So we have to be very clear. We're not all the same in this, but there may be some things that most of us find quite stressful. So, for example, sadly, at this moment when I'm recording these sessions, we're going through this COVID pandemic. So many of us will be worried about our health. We're, we may be worried about keeping safe both in school and outside in the social context. So stress, let's think about some definitions here. Stress is really this feeling that we have of mental strain which can affect our well-being and a stressor, a stressor can be anything that causes stress, that could be an exam, or the current COVID pandemic, a relationship where someone might be being unkind to us or we're not feeling secure in. Anxiety, is something slightly different. It's that unhelpful feeling of intense fear that affects our well-being. So I think anxiety for me is a step up from stress. Stress can sometimes lead to it when it becomes what we call toxic, when it becomes too much. A phobia is a, an intense fear of something that poses little or actually no danger to us. So I might have a phobia of being outside in big spaces, but it might not pose a big threat to me. I might have a phobia of spiders or the dark, etc. A panic attack is something very, very um, significant for some of us who experience a lot of anxiety. This can be a, a rush of really an intense anxiety with, it has physical symptoms that go with it. So the heart beating really fast, palpitations, sweating, getting really, really hot, short of breath, not being able to breathe deeply. So that's when we think about a panic attack and that's really at the top end of this continuum. What we have to remember all of us, I think, adults and children alike, is that a little bit of stress can help us do things well. It can help us to focus and concentrate, but too much is bad for our well-being. And very often when I work with children and young people, I get them to think about stress as being something that actually fills their bucket. So we have this visual image of the stress bucket. When this is full of stresses, things that make us feel overwhelmed and anxious, then it really can be quite damaging to us. We need to make holes in that bucket to actually let some of that stress out so that we can manage it on a daily basis and learn what the right level of stress is for us. So we need to open the valves here. And sometimes that can be by doing creative things. 
Sometimes that can be by just stopping and pausing, using deep breathing, mindfulness, relaxation. We have to find out what works for us as individuals. And each child and young person, each adult will have different strategies. I'm gonna give you some top tips, very simple, easy, but evidence-based top tips for how we can manage stress better or more effectively. At the start, I think it's really important to identify what actually does stress you out. What is a stressor to you? What does that mean? What does it feel and look like? And sometimes keeping a journal or a stress diary can help us to do this. Just stopping at the end of the day and thinking, what was it about today? What was, what was the thing that actually triggered that for me? Because then ultimately we can think about how we can reduce that on a daily basis. So what could I do differently? What might help me if that happens again tomorrow? And trying to identify what it feels like when you're stressed is a second tip, really important. What does this feel like to me? Let's draw it, let's write it down, let's express it visually so that we can think what does it actually feel like for me personally so that I get some knowledge of this so I can see when it's beginning to happen. Three, try to also identify what calms you down and makes you feel good and plan this into your daily schedule. So what is it that makes you feel calm, content, relaxed? And that can be a range of things, practicing kindness, let, going, let go of what you can't control, focusing on the good, the positives, just breathing or using deep breathing or grounding techniques, find out what works and plan that in. Or for me, it's about sharing what you know with friends, family, teachers. So very often we forget the importance of actually talking about this stuff. So chatting to someone else about what stresses you out, but how you actually manage that, what works and sharing our strategies together so that we can really jointly come up with solutions that might work for us. And sometimes actually listening to your friend and what, what works for them can be really, really helpful. You can actually pick up lots of really good tips and ideas. Five. Remember that lots of people feel stressed and anxious and that stress and anxiety can be managed and treated. And this is really important. We don't need to keep on not being OK. It's OK to not be OK for short periods of time. We know that we can manage it. We need a bit of stress in our daily lives. But, you know, you need to think very carefully about this. You mustn't suffer in silence. It's really important to identify who is that key person, the key adult in your life that you know, you trust, that loves you, that's got your back, who you can go and talk to when you're feeling overwhelmed. Planning ahead is a top strategy that I use for managing a stressful situation. So what I tend to do is imagine that situation that really worries me in great detail and I focus on how I'm likely to feel. I write that down. And then what I do is I prepare for that situation. So I think about what I need to do in terms of maybe managing that, exams, that exam or test that's coming up. I'm um, thinking about maybe what I've got to do in terms of managing that particular topic I need to revise, making a plan for that. And I ask for help, teachers, friends, and I do a bit of research and reading. Then I think about all the different possibilities, what might happen in that situation and tell my mind to be calm and relaxed in each one of those. And what really helps me with that is that I write down all the different things that could go wrong or that could increase my stress, okay? And then next to each one of those, you could use post-it notes for this. I write down all the different things that I could do if that particular thing happens. So it's like the problem, what I could do, the problem, what I could do. Now, you can't plan for everything, but I find this helps me because when I see this written down, I think, yeah, okay, that might go wrong. That might go wrong, but this is what I'm going to do. This is my plan. And maybe I even have a little script for things that I'll say to myself in my head. Okay, should that go wrong? So really, really important to think about this. So it's, it's really about being prepared. If I have a plan, I will feel less stressed because it's about feeling in control. So for example, if I'm asked to stand up and do a presentation for a group of friends, 
or in my class, then I would plan this. I'd make my script up, I'd write it out. I'd write it down on memory cards, maybe post-it notes. I'd have it prepared. Then I would feel less anxious because there's not a lot that could go wrong, okay? And I think it's really important. Planning reduces anxiety and stress, okay? And it helps us to feel calmer so that we can do our best. And then after that so-called stressful situation, Think about how you're going to relax, how you're going to unwind, how you're going to reward yourself for getting through it. So this has been useful today. And don't forget, it's really a game down to you to create your own toolbox of well-being. I'm going to present lots of things in the 20 sessions in this series, um, lots of tools and strategies that you might want to use. It might be helpful, but it's trial and error. Have a go. If it doesn't work, tweak it. If it doesn't work, try something different, but hopefully I'll be presenting you with so much stuff, so many strategies, that there'll be something that will work for you. So think about what you do now, what does work, and what maybe you could do a wee bit more of in order to maintain your well-being, your, your feel-good factor in your daily life. So thanks for listening, and I hope you join me for the next one, number three in this session, um, which are really hopefully gonna be useful to you.